TSLA stock. This is Tesla. And I've got to do a Tesla video right now. I think Bitcoin is a bigger deal than Tesla at the moment, but Elon Musk, uh, of course, like comes out saying some more ridiculous stuff. He's saying he's going to quit his jobs, meaning like all of the companies that he owns, and be an influencer. This is obviously a joke. I mean, I hope, or I think. But, okay, let's say he quit like Tesla. There's SpaceX, Boring Company, Neuralink. Like, he's obviously not quitting all of his companies. This is a crazy thing to say. I mean, I don't know why he comes out and does this. <laughs> um, but anyway, let's take a look at Tesla. Let's um, just like run through a couple of the technicals here because the stock market is interesting. And then Bitcoin, I'll tap on Bitcoin, but I, th I need to do an entire another video on Bitcoin because that's a whole separate issue at the moment. But let's check out the Tesla technicals. Tesla has a very cool bubble formation, which I'm sure you've seen. Um, so this is a, you know, the meme stock, the original meme stock, uh, and Elon Musk is the meme Lord, but yeah, anyway, let's go look at the technicals. So we have follow this green dotted line here. This is sort of the ascending bubble trend line of the Tesla bubble. And so, I mean, way early bubble here, and this is during the COVID crash. Uh, you know, you you kind of swing up and down and find the bubble line and then you go on your bubble run. So sort of the bubble run pretty much blew off in February this year. Tested the bull line, failed, right? And then this is kind of a weird move. Actually, after busting the line, you go pick up support and make another run and fail. So I think the last Tesla video that I did was around here. And I was just saying, not that we will get trapped under this downtrend line, but I know where it is before it happens. Like, I didn't need three taps to draw this downtrend line. I drew this downtrend line before any of these taps happened. I drew it on the immediate pullback here. Um, I knew exactly where we were going to get trapped uh, because we have four parallel lines exactly right here that we've done on the bull run. And so this rejection, it's just like, boom, it's going to be this downtrend line. Uh, you can go back and look at the last Tesla video. This downtrend line I had in place way back here, and we did get trapped under it. So this is a huge deal. Anyways, the point that I'm trying to make here is uh, I put a warning out on Tesla, on just like on this peak reversal, um, because that's a big deal to... You blow your bull run line, right? And then you fail. You do a you do a move up to try to get back to it and you fail. Okay, so that is risky. That's not a good move to look at. But here's where we are right now. We failed, boom, fine. But two taps and fail. Uh, now we are trapped under this trend line. So it's just a matter of when do we break out. Um, and so here's a couple of spots where breakouts are likely. Let's take a look at the chart. Uh, right here is a huge likely breakout place, and this is nearby. So we have a triangle, and you can kind of sporadically flip around inside this triangle. Um, but if we break out through, and that's similar to what we did back here. Uh, see this triangle here? Same kind of setup, right? You're getting sort of trapped, you're on a support line, you push through, then you can continue going. So that is one likely scenario for a bullish outlook is we are trapped under this line short term, we break out and then we continue. And in that case, there's tons of room left in the bubbly area, but there is no room left on this bull trend line that we've been on. So. On that note, here's a couple other looks at kind of the Tesla zone. And like I said, probably in two or three videos, if I mention Tesla, uh, this is a terrible spot to start trying to like swing trade or like day trade Tesla because we're in the middle of a triangle, which means you can go to either side at any point, randomly cross over. So, I mean... Maybe that's good for day trading or swing trading. 
if you're ballsy. Um, but Tesla is expensive. You know, it's like a thousand dollars stock. So, uh, and the volatility is high. So, any kind of options contracts are really expensive to trade right now. Um, but in any case. Uh, let's just say that we're stuck in here. Maybe we break out through. I think that's unlikely. I think getting in this triangle and breaking down at this point is more likely because we've already blown our bull line here. And I think Tesla is kind of getting in trouble here. And this, uh, this pushes us all the way out to like March next year. Um, if we do that kind of consolidation... Um, and the other thing that we could do is uh, break the line sooner, which is possible, and I think less likely. Like, I think we're in this consolidation area. Anyway, this is my outlook on Tesla right now, as I think we're consolidating. And this is a symmetrical, just from technicals, it's a symmetrical triangle. There's no, there's no direction on which way it's more likely to break out on this formation. It's not a bull flag. It is not a bear flag. This is a symmetrical trial, like triangle consolidation. Um, but I would say bearish because we blew our bull trend line. So bearish is more likely. Um, but in any case, that's kind of the consolidation uh, on Tesla. And I mean, I think the immediate target for swing trading, that none of this is financial advice, obviously, is right around here this is like eight to nine hundred range over the next couple of weeks it's kind of a support area which i would expect to hold uh and just run out into you know february something of next year or something like that but swing trading kind of support here but if we're breaking this thing well then it starts to get into a different scenario like if we start breaking down let's just look at it in case it happens uh, we have a downtrend line painted here, but a breakdown is going to start looking like an ABC correction wave. So that would most likely look like probably pull down to this line somewhere in this area. So this is January to May, and it's in like the 400s. So break like getting around 500 or breaking 500 into beginning middle of next year is like a down move here but then that's an a wave so then you would get a b wave which is a pretty aggressive you know up move which would break through the downtrend line and do like a false breakout overthrow and that's back up almost to a thousand around august middle of the year something um, and then what you usually do is just consolidate down the original downtrend line which we picked up right here so this is a pretty typical like when you blow a bull line you usually do an abc wave so this is a really typical kind of wave so we may consolidate and then do an abc wave we might break it and do an abc wave but i think the abc wave scenario is pretty likely on tesla at this point um but yeah in any case uh on the bull side Regardless of my guess, just the technicals, uh, if we start breaking above the downtrend line, it starts looking pretty bullish, and there's actually a ton of space to make huge up moves. And, I mean, 3,000-ish area, 3, 4,000, the top of the kind of bubble area that it's been trending on. So, I mean, if we're breaking out of this area around 1,000, like, I feel like the upside is three to 4,000. And this is just during next year. Um, so that's a big, <laughs> those are two pretty dramatic kind of uh, scenarios, but that's kind of what we're doing is consolidating into a point where you make a huge move one way or the other. All right, so anyway, that's the Tesla outlook and Elon Musk. <laughs> Why does he come out and do this? Like threaten to leave his companies and... And he's selling his stocks at the same time. I mean, he's selling like blocks of stocks now on schedule. And now he's threatening to leave the company. Like, why would why would he do that? That's just a ridiculous thing to do. Especially like if people are accusing him of like 
selling his stocks at a high price or like manipulating the market or something like if he's trying to sell stocks why would he be like putting out fake bad news that's ridiculous uh just like he doesn't even think that way um okay so let's uh let's just look at some normal market stuff like that's tesla the big meme stock we'll look at some other evs in a second but the general market the s p has done uh just a move back like we went up and we did sort of a false breakout of the big bull channel here which it overthrew and came down and it started looking like this is a huge resistance area where you can get a pretty decent down move uh, and we just kind of pulled down and popped right back so I mean as of right now the S&P looks fine but it's just kind of like around this resistance if you look at the momentum it's starting to break bullish here. You can see the blue line crossing the red line. This is like the golden cross kind of bull breakout scenario just starting to shape up. Um, and so if we get the blue line coming up in momentum, like that's going to paint, that's going to paint big up moves here. So, uh, right. Like I painted like the kind of melt up picture like maybe three weeks ago but when we started breaking down below these levels i'm like that's really doesn't look great for the melt up scenario but let me just draw the melt up again which is basically you consolidate on top of the whole channel and this is a channel that goes back 13 years and we've never broken out of the top of it the whole time just to kind of quickly look back this is volmageddon and covid crash uh, 2018, 2020. And here we have potentially trying to break out, but we're just kind of right at the top of the channel again. So breaking down is more likely than breaking out of the top. But if we do break out of the top, then we have a huge, huge amount of space to go to the upside here. Uh, 6,000 something on the S&P, like 4,000 to 6,000, more than 6,000. Um, and this could happen kind of fast. You consolidate and just blast. And that probably would blow off. Maybe not that dramatically, but that's kind of the melt-up picture. But I really don't like the melt-up picture after this breakdown. Like, now that we've broken down under both levels, the melt-up doesn't look as likely. Like, you want to break on top and stay up there. And then you explode to the upside. Like this move, this is a false. So we did like a false breakout above the channel. Now we've done a false breakdown below both of these levels, which is aiming this direction. So ooh, just anyway, the S&P is still bullish. The momentum is turning bullish. So that's all good and fine. Um... But yeah, we just have to see kind of where it starts going the next week because it's just a dangerous spot to be sitting at the top of a huge resistance area that we've never like broken out of. It's unlikely that we do it now. And this like this kind of a false breakout move is not a great like that's an indicator that we'll go back and break out like way later, not immediately. So I think it's more likely that we have resistance here than pick up like support and breakout. But in any case, like I think we're just kind of trading around the top of the channel for now. And there are bearish targets here, but yeah, anyway, just there's just not that much going on in the S&P right now. Like we need some kind of technical formation that will indicate like a, another move from here. Yeah, anyway, I'm still bearish. <laughs> I'm still bearish on this on this position. I thought we were going to pull down sooner, but I still think we're going to pull down. But in any case, the technicals are not as bearish as I am because uh I don't know. I don't know why. I've just 
I think we're going to pull down before we go up to the top. We haven't had like a legit pullback. Like this thing, this thing painted a down channel. But it didn't pull back far enough to qualify as like a, as like the end of a wave. So just in kind of the Elliott wave sense, we have to pull back enough to complete a down wave before you can go higher. This, this almost always happens. <clears throat> Okay, let's look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ uh, has had rotation in. And so if you're rotating out of riskier stocks and into more stable kind of internet stocks, uh, this is kind of an indicator that the general market could be getting weaker, but just more money is consolidating into less and less stocks. And this is the same thing we saw before the 2000 bust. Like that's what you see as you're going up a bubble. Like it keeps going up, but it keeps consolidating tighter and tighter into the the few stocks that are like the big ones. So that's a cool look, but let's go to uh, the NASDAQ versus the S&P because we were getting all time highs on this indicator, which means like more and more money's going into the NASDAQ, but now it's kind of, undecided it's sort of pulling back a little bit now okay so eh, like is it consolidating or not i think it is still and this is not exactly like a bullish setup on the indicator but just the whole move over the last year has been a bunch of up move consolidating into you know the nasdaq which is mostly the FANG stocks. And then if you look at the TLT, I like to look at this one a bunch um, because the treasury bonds is like, is money flowing into risk assets or is it going into just safe government treasury bonds? And so we had a huge breakout in the TLT the last couple of weeks. And so that was looking like a huge indicator that we're gonna have a deflationary move if we can complete this breakout. And now we're pulling back and now it's undecided. So this week is gonna be really tricky because uh, if we get if we get the deflationary breakout and a huge move into treasury bonds, that puts pressure on the stock market, that puts huge pressure on Bitcoin. Um, if we start coming down, then that's really good for Bitcoin and pretty good for the stock market. So this is going to be a big chart to watch this week. And this is still looking like it's in an up move, but it hasn't actually got support and started to break out now because it came back down. So yeah, the treasuries are a big deal. The DXY has been pushing strong for months and it looks pretty good it looks like it's consolidating above a couple of levels so if the di if the if the dxy explodes to the upside it puts pressure down on the stock market um but it hasn't been putting a ton of pressure like i don't know how high it has to get to really pressure the stock market but i mean if you see if you see the dxy like going vertical like this that's definitely gonna correlate with a, a down move on the market not that it would do that right now but just for example, um, gold is just like blah, kind of still bearish, but similar kind of thing. If you see money moving into treasuries, if you see money going into gold, they start breaking out. Those are two monetary assets that are opposite of stocks and Bitcoin. Like this is getting out of the market. So again, like not breaking out yet, but considering it, um, silver probably less interesting for this video because it, it's connected to commodities um, let's look at Bitcoin real quick it's like sitting at support let me tighten the band up alright so uh, I switched from sort of a longer consolidation outlook on Bitcoin here where I was thinking the top of Bitcoin this cycle might be like March or something and not that crazy, like 65, 70 out here. 
Um, and I completely switched my view on that to we're in trouble right now. Um, and that's because, uh, well, we, I, we've never double hit the top of this ribbon. If you go back, like the previous Bitcoin bubble blew out the top, came down. The one before that blew out the top right here, right, and came down. This time we went in a little bit early and we went in a little bit weaker and we got, we flatted out and we rejected. We hit it again and we rejected. Um, so I'll do a whole another video on Bitcoin, but I think Bitcoin is a huge risk right now. Technically it looks terrible. Not terrible, but it's flipping bearish on all the indicators and the technicals. But it hasn't broken down below support, and there's a few support levels. Um, but it's just like the huge Craig Wright court case. All this information came out that Craig Wright probably is the creator of Bitcoin, and he does not support the BTC fork of Bitcoin. He says this is not Bitcoin. Um, and even like BCH was bitcoin but now that got messed up so like now the bsv bitcoin satoshi vision is the correct fork of bitcoin that people should be using and he can come out with patents proving that he created bitcoin and any kind of war between the different forks of bitcoin could be devastating to btc all the altcoins like pretty much everything i would expect to come down uh, in that in that scenario, and we just finished the court case, so like that kind of stuff could could come out very public at any moment. We'll have to see what happens. We'll get into Bitcoin a little bit later. I want to flip through some of these uh, sort of Tesla related stocks. Let's flip through some stocks and just kind of see where we're set up coming into the next trading week here. Arc Invest. Just broke down into a lower channel. And these... It's not like bear flagging super hard. It just rolled over into a lower channel. So it doesn't look awesome. But I mean, if we're just in this channel and this is the only downtrend, like this could drag out for a year. Like before anything even remotely interesting happens. I don't love messing with the ARC trade right now. Um, although it does look kind of ugly, it's a really difficult spot to enter a trade on this thing. Um, workhorse. So this is one of kind of the meme stock EV stocks that went a little bit crazy. They have the Department of Justice and the SEC investigating them. And they have new, all new uh, CEO, C-suite people. And so... They make electric vehicles, uh, electric vans, like delivery vans, last mile delivery vans. And this is a pretty interesting one because I think the last video I did specifically on this was like, oh, we're coming into support in this bullish bubble structure here. And we'll see if we can pick up a bullish trend line. And we did not. We fell down through and now we're stabbing down even harder like through this you know bearish anyway the chart is threatening to become pretty ugly here and we did not pick up a bullish structure we did not get a volume bullish move we just came down so i mean that's putting that's putting this stock in this area which has a downside of almost zero yeah, this thing is looking a little scary now. And so this is kind of an outlook on almost the entire meme stock EV space. Like if Tesla if Tesla starts failing, if Bitcoin starts crashing, like what does the rest of the market do? Like there's I mean, the Fang stocks maybe hold up a little better, but there's all these super high risk kind of growth stocks that people have been, you know, 
gambling on, but uh, let's flip through them like this. If this starts breaking down, it can get pretty scary. Um, Go EV hasn't started breaking down yet. This one picked up picked up support, and it's considering a bullish trend breakout. So like, this is a more bullish outlook for anyone that's super bullish on the EV sector. Like this one did get uh, did get a volume breakout. It did get a move. It does look like it's picking up a bullish line. So um, canoe. I like this chart from the bullish side. And I can't, I can't really decide, like, if we're going to have, like, a big, like, uh, liquidation or, like, a dollar squeeze. Or if we're going to have a bunch of money printing and have stuff move up again. But, like, this is a stock that would be probably interesting if we start getting a bunch of new money printed in. Um... Nikola workhorse was looking a little scary. Nikola is probably looking more scary. I did a video on this one recently, but uh, this is a SPAC, which means it came into the public market without an IPO, without like proving viable product and getting the normal. I mean, you have to prove like a little bit of viability coming in as an IPO. As a SPAC, like you can literally just come in with a PowerPoint presentation, <laughs> which is roughly. Um, what Nikola has to show at this point like they have a vehicle that doesn't work they have like no customers no infrastructure no supply chain their CEOs like under investigation um, anyway allegedly all of these things I read from an online source and you can go check and do your own research but the general idea here is if if we get a dollar squeeze, if we start getting a contraction, if we start getting a down move in the general market, um, stocks like this get very risky. And it's pushing on multiple support levels now. So it hasn't broken down yet. It's sitting there. It's thinking about it. But if it does break down, there's a lot of downside room for it to go. Like there's very little, I mean, this is like the early investors got in here. If we start breaking down under here, like they're holding the bag, all the early investors are holding the bag. That's when you can just see a huge like teleport sell off because like any money that they didn't get out of during this and there's rules on how long they have to wait before they can sell. Actually, I should probably look that up because that's important. Like, uh, if they can sell, that definitely increases the downside risk. And I think we're I think we're pretty good past that point now already. Um, but I should probably go look that up. But in any case, um, this is a stock that looks like it has pretty big downside risk, even though it got a little pop. And Let's look at some other sort of Tesla related stocks here. Arkimoto FUV uh, is falling down off its channel and getting under a bearish line. And this looks like it uh, could have already started ABC here. Like we look like we came down right over through it and then C wave would just be kind of back to support. So that takes you out to the end of next year with like a weak outlook on this. I don't like the technical setup on this thing, especially now that we fell off the channel. Um, Rivian, whatever. This is a new, newly trading, so there's not much technicals on that. Uh, Solo. Oh, this broke down harder than I, harder than I thought. So I don't know where we go down from here. Like now we're underneath. We blew like that support channel. We're kind of under here. Maybe there's support here. This one's tricky. It's really hard to tell. It looks like it kind of blew the bullish trend and but there's like I just don't have a very good chart set up for like where a bearish trend would go. I mean I could see like support picking up here like if it picks up and breaks out of the bearish trend here uh, you know there's a ton of space to trade up here but uh, if it doesn't like, if we broke down under this, I really don't know where it's going. Uh, but anyway, 
that's going to be a month or two to kind of see where that one's going. Um, REE has been consolidating sideways. I had a, a video where I showed like a bearish trade on this, which is now losing. Um, but I still don't like the structure of this thing. It's just kind of trending sideways in a bearish consolidation, but uh, yeah. Anyway, you can see a lot of the EV stocks look pretty risky right now. And the general S&P doesn't look that risky, but margin loans. Did I look at the IWM? What is it doing? Like I look, I like to look at the IWM to kind of track margin loans. And we had a, a huge blast and new money come in, a bunch of margin loans, a bunch of like um, investment companies. And we got a big head fake kind of fail here. And now we're testing the bottom of this channel on a downtrend. And so like if the IWM breaks down, that means just like new money being loaned or printed into risky stocks is not only decreasing, but like being called back in. So once you start getting loans like reversing, that's like margin calls, that gets really dangerous. So the IWM is a good one to look at. Let me check out a few more EVs. So outside of just the electric vehicle stocks, since we're looking at the Tesla stuff, um, you know, there's a bunch of related companies like Blink Charging, which is blowing, it's blowing the bull trend now. Hasn't like set up a really clear bear trend yet. Um, yeah, a bunch of these charts are just like looking sketchy. Um, yeah, this is a similar thing. Like QuantumScape looked like it was picking up a huge bull trend. And now it's retesting support and trying to break down. Like if this thing comes down below the bear trend line, like this is a complete false breakout. And like what is below? There's nothing below. And this this one's pretty pricey. It's not a penny stock. But we're getting this kind of structure across a ton of these. Where the bullish trend is just being tested or broken down. Uh, fuel cell aqua metals. Uh, this is like a lithium recycling company. And yeah, similar kind of thing. Like we're breaking the bullish trend and now we're pressing and testing like the bearish trend lines. But I mean, you can see here, like if we break down under all of this, where are we going? Like where's support? Like where's a trade? It starts looking pretty scary, and this is a penny stock, so I don't even know the downside targets on this. But I mean, you can see if we cross like all the way across the bear channels, this is getting close to zero. So this is just ugly. That's just an ugly setup. I mean, you can see like the bullish, the bullish side of it. If we jump on support, there's tons of bullish side to this. If we get a flood of new money in and things are going bullish, like that structure is all there. But as of like this week, we're testing the other direction. We're going to see if we can break down and get in huge trouble basically right now. Like things are, things are considering crashing a lot of individual stocks, but not like the whole market in general, but like a bunch of these risky kind of tech stocks that have questionable, you know, business models and a ton of random money. Like these things are looking risky. Um, American, American battery metals, uh, same thing, blew the bull trend. Doesn't have a very clear like trade to the downside, but it looks like it pi it's picking up a downtrend. Uh, yeah, we can kind of get into GME. Um, I actually really like this chart. This looks like a bull flag. It looks like we're coming into support. Okay, so here's a, here's a cool thing maybe is... A couple of risky stocks kind of sell or crash out. The stock market maybe pulls back a little, but if we get support here on GME, and uh, you can see, you know, this is a pretty good support line, and this is where we jumped off of on our huge first bubble. 
So if we pick up support here on GME and we get back on the bullish trend line, I mean, GME has potential to go from 100 something, what, like 120, 130, somewhere in here. And this bull line goes into the thousands by the middle of next year and you can bull above it into several thousand something like that so the whole mo ass kind of mother of all short squeezes situation uh, is still technically a pretty good setup here uh, so yeah this is kind of the look that i have right now it's like oh there's a bunch of stuff threatening to break down super hard and maybe that happens and then Potentially it does do that and then GME picks up support and then the rebound like GME maybe you could get the rebound play on that um, So that is a cool Swing trading thing if that happens you can swing trade some of the garbage stocks out and then you can um, Go crazy long on the Whatever you want to call it meme stocks that are still around potentially yeah, that's probably good for this video. I just kind of wanted to check in on Tesla and look at a couple of the EV setups because uh, it hasn't, well, it hasn't really happened yet, but there's a bunch of stocks threatening down moves. And so we'll just see this week if they start doing it or not. I think that'll do. I, I want to take a look at Bitcoin. Let me, let me push this video out. I'll come back. Not investment advice, like and comment and stuff. Um... Let me come back and look at Bitcoin because there's a ton of drama drama in the Bitcoin area.